It is existence and uniqueness theorem time. Another relatively quick one. That's why I'm doing it at the beginning because uh, I'm lazy in that way. So we know that if we have an equation in the form where the uh, highest derivative has a coefficient of one, so let's quickly rearrange that. We have y double prime plus sine t over t squared minus one y prime minus y over t squared minus one t minus three is equal to e to the t ln t all over t squared minus one and we have some initial initial condition here. So y of two is equal to zero. I'll just put put a two in the middle of the number line. Now what we're looking for here is the longest distance that we can go on this number line in either direction before we hit some kind of discontinuity. And we're looking for any discontinuities in uh, what's multiplied by y prime, uh, what's multiplied by y over here and even, even this term. So our discontinuities will occur when uh, t is equal to plus or minus one, coming from uh, this guy right here, that's no good. Uh, additionally, when t is equal to, t is equal to three, and when t is equal to uh, zero because, or sorry, when t is when t is less than zero because we have an, a natural log of t. That's something to take into account as well. So because uh, our solution curve definitely has uh, is defined for y of two, we can see that uh, if we go in the left direction, we are going to hit our t equals one discontinuity first, and if we go in the other direction, we will hit t equals three. So we can only guarantee that a solution exists between one and three. Uh, similarly, we have a very, sim very similar question. These are all uh, pretty formulaic. So doing what we did before, y double prime plus t minus four over five minus t, y prime plus two over five minus t y is equal to ln t over five minus t. Yet again, uh, we'll write out our discontinuities. t is equal to five is no good, and t less than zero is also no good. We see that our initial condition is for t equals seven, so we'll put seven in the middle of our number line and see what happens here. We will hit t equals five on this side, uh, but we can go all the way to infinity over here without running into any issues. So a solution is guaranteed to exist uh, from five to infinity given this initial value. What's the largest open interval in which the solution to this initial value problem is guaranteed to exist uh, by the existence and uniqueness theorem? Dividing out our t squared that we see multiplying our highest order derivative, uh, we have y prime plus ln t minus one over t squared e to the t minus two y plus t my, oops, sorry, that's not a plus, that's an equals t minus five divided by t squared sine t minus four. So finding our discontinuities, we'll see that because we have a t squared in our denominator of our y and uh, f of t term over here, t cannot equal zero. Additionally, uh, you might think that this natural log term is okay because we have that, uh, that absolute value bracket, so anything less than zero uh, is now fair game. That'll get bumped back up to, to a positive value, but natural, the natural log of zero is still undefined, so t cannot equal one. Uh, additionally, this guy is of concern. Uh, the, so the sine of something is equal to zero when 
Uh, that something is a multiple of pi. So what we can get from that is if t minus 4 is equal to uh, c times pi, uh, then we have an issue. So let's add this 4 over. Um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this differently. If t is equal to 4 minus pi, then this in here will give us, this will give us, uh, uh, this will give us a sign of 4 minus 4, so 0 minus pi. And then uh, additionally, we could actually just say plus or minus pi. And these are really going to be the ones uh, for us to for us to be thinking about this would give us a, the sign of the sign of pi and and finally yeah uh, if if t is equal to 4 that's another issue for us so uh, these are our four these are our four discontinuities to think about and uh, since our initial value is for y equals 3 we'll draw out our number line and start thinking about where and uh, which which of these discontinuities will hit first. So four uh, plus pi will sit somewhere over here. Four plus pi. Uh, four minus pi is four minus a little over three. Uh, so that'll get us to like I don't know 0.83 or something like that. Um, 0.84. Um, so there's that. We also have uh, t equals 0 and t equals 1. t equals 1 makes this one even redundant to put, uh, to put on the page. And uh, we also have our t not equal to 4. So that will come somewhere around here. And as you can see, uh, the two bounding discontinuities on here are t equal 1 and t equal four. So that's our answer. A little bit of a, of a more difficult one of these questions, for sure. And then question uh, one, which is our last question. We're determining the interval where the solution is guaranteed to exist. We'll divide out our t plus two y prime plus one over t plus two y is equal to one over t minus one t plus two and we'll see that our discontinuities occur when t is equal to 1 and t is equal to negative 2. So since we have an initial condition for t is equal to 0, which falls right in between 1 and negative 2, these are our bounding uh, discontinuities for our solution. And so we're only guaranteed to have a solution that exists between negative 1 and, uh, sorry, negative 2 and 1.